So the gentleman that goes by Ford Escape was curious whether the curve of the uh, uh, variable output from the Scan hack would change based on volume level, which was a really good um, thing to try. He had experienced that with another Ford system that he was testing. And so I have the sweep running now and the volume is turned down very, very low. And I thought I would go ahead and inch the volume up so that we could see whether the change is linear, whether the uh, signal is linear, the spectrum is linear, or whether it changes with the volume. And I think that uh, you'll see that here. This will take a little, while, little longer because the sweeps take a minute to average out or just a few seconds to go through the sweeps. They're five second, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz sweeps. And here we go. On a couple of these, I let the sweep run through five, six, seven, or eight five second iterations to show how it smooths out the curve. And I just thought that was important to see, and that's what I did here. at 50% volume now and we're still seeing a very flat curve as we increase. So this has a very linear response as it scales up. This curve in the left is what I was talking about when the video began. We'll look at that in more detail in just a moment. Notice the curve on the left go from negative dB down under 100 hertz to even with the rest of the curve. As I looked at this over the weekend, I think I spent six or eight hours watching these sweeps for various reasons. I kept seeing that particular artifact and after a while it would flip up to even or flip up to actually positive where there was more boost down there. So I don't believe that that negative dB uh, is an issue. I believe the response is quite flat and I'll show you that in just a minute when I zoom in. Okay, that's maximum volume and given a few sweeps it will completely flatten out much like the curves in the other video. All right, I'm going to turn the volume down and talk to you for just a moment to set up the last bit of the video. We're going to focus on the far left-hand side of the screen, the little uh, negative or positive dB bump you see there. And it turns out in my previous two videos where I was showing this, or three videos where I was showing this, I was actually clicking on 391 kilohertz, not 381 hertz. So my scaling on those videos are wrong. And it turns out that uh, apparently the base response down low is very, very flat. And I'm showing you that now. And so what I'm going to do is my, my scaling is at 24 kilohertz, but I have zoomed the screen into 0 to 20,000 hertz. And then once uh, this flattens out for just a moment, I'm going to zoom in to, uh, I think, 381 hertz. So you would have a scale from 0 hertz to 380 hertz. And you'll see just how flat 
the bass response is down low and then I'll adjust the volume a little bit like I've been doing so far and I hope that clears up any confusion and I'm sorry about my mistakes on the other videos but uh, they're done and I've deleted the information and I can't go back and redo them I think that they show there's not a problem down low and I'm gonna for most for most eyes they won't notice but uh, there is no problem down low it's completely flat Okay, I've zoomed back out to the 0 to 20 kilohertz using the 24 kilohertz scale so you can see the entire range from 0 to 20,000 hertz. And then I'm going to zoom back into uh, I think 180 hertz so you can see again down low how flat and clean it is. And you see a very little bump to the very far left and that is at 3 hertz. So again, I think the response we get from this head unit is as good as one could ask for from a factory head unit or probably many other head units. Thanks for your time.